From Los Angeles, California, we are the Mad Scientist Party Hour. Why does it, it always dies down for me on my end? Is that just my? Is that just me? Well, you may as well just talk over it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, friends. Welcome to another episode of Mad Scientist Party Hour. My name's Kevin Kraft. Joined by a man who is once again nude from the waist down and is in the process of pulling a handkerchief out of his boner hole. That's Jeff Clark. Hey guys, thanks for having me. And transmitting to us from the peak of Mount Everest, the bearded booger-eating Sherpa known as Shuddy Boy. Yo. I feel like I've heard that one before. Have you been up Probably. on top of Mount Everest before, Shuddy? I have not. No. Uh, all right. If if um, you've definitely been a bearded booger eating Sherpa. Might have that been is a possible. Booger eating maybe the Sher- Grand Canyon. Sherbert. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. I meant. See if if um, Juan Castro or whatever his name is would stop deleting our Wikipedia page, we could have like a a running tally. <laughs> what I don't was know. that guy's name? We'll go with Juan Castro today. Either way. I can't remember it. Tui, Tui. He's a scumbag. It's been a long time since I f- almost forgot about that beef. Do maybe time does heal wounds. Uh, yeah. Carlos Sanchez. That was his fucking name, wasn't it? Carlos Sanchez. It might be. That oh, look shit. out. The fucking Wikipedia police are here. <laughs> yeah oh okay we don't have that many media companies following us and publishing articles doesn't mean we don't exist i bet he Check tries us to... out on the riotcast.com website yeah good luck <laughs> i bet you i bet you carlos sanchez goes to bars and tries to get pussy with that like hey, i'm a wikipedia moderator that's guess, a, guess how many icebreaker. wikipedias i deleted today i have so much authority <laughs> At least he's not a Reddit moderator, though. Might as well be. That, that's more respect. I don't know. I feel like a Reddit moderator is like a, a janitor at like a fucking Jack Shack or one of those. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what are they called? I don't know. Whatever. A, a, a pornography theater. <laughs> Jeff, so you're all fucking jacked up today. Yeah, I'm on. I got the Death Wish coffee going. And I'm about to win my biggest sports bet ever. Mm, how confident are you? Um, it is a 99.8 percenter. Actually, excuse me, it is 99.9. This fucking thing is locked up. So I made a big bet, as everyone knows, last week. I won game six, or excuse me, the team that I bet on won game six during the podcast, defeating the MSPH Jinx. It went to game seven. I lost that bet, lost my money. I took insurance and bet the single games and had my little gambling tricks to where I actually profited in the series, but I lost a pretty big bet. I made pretty much the same size bet on a bigger underdog, and that motherfucker is about to cash on MSPH Tuesday this week. Tuesday. Yeah, maybe that's the trick. Maybe since we're recording on a Tuesday... It's shifted the the curse. The curse is lost. It doesn't know where to go. It got but, some other sad know, sacks last podcast. Last Monday, last Monday, I fucking killed it. I was on fire. It wasn't just that bet that I won. It was like three others. So, I don't know. Maybe the MSPH curse is uh, non-existent, or it's taking the fall off. Well, shit. Know. September. We could all use it, right? September. If we can parlay that into football season. And I can smoke you fucking clowns in fantasy football. When does stupid Final Fantasy football start again? Thursday. Personally on Thursday, but uh, Sunday. Uh, Mostly uh, Sunday. Woo-hoo. You gotta get your lineup in order, Kevin. Your auto-drafted lineup. <laughs> yeah, for real. Hey, can't do any worse than uh, I did the other times, right? Fuck it. No, dude. Bonzi had a... Bonzi accidentally, one of our, um, one of the Puminati elite, he's in my $55 league. Oh, you mean Bonesy? 
Bonesy. Yeah, it, it's it, Bonesy's the wrong way of saying it. Bonesy. Excuse me. I'm sorry. Bonesy. <laughs> He moved cross country up in Canada and that coincided with the draft date. So he missed the draft and he had to have his whole team auto drafted. And, you know, my policy of who gives a fuck you're in, you're in, doesn't matter. But his team got graded. His draft got graded better than mine. Got like graded better than most did. people. What's up? Like Kevin's did. Yeah. That's how, I mean, that could be like, the computer sucking its own dick, but it could also just be yeah. like your auto drive team be could be better than mine. That is a very the team I picked gets an A plus. <laughs> I could see a computer pulling some bitch moves like that. Yeah, well, whatever. So, but I'm excited. So, I'm so excited. Are you, is the game about to end? That is the linchpin of your big crazy bet. Yeah, it's over. There's a there's eleven and a half seconds. The team's up by eight. It can't. It's over. It's over. Nice. The game's over. The clock's gonna run out. And the dragon fucking wins. The number one seed goes down. The Milwaukee Bucks. Can I get? You've just been Jeff. You fucking pussies. Uh, sure. You've just been Jeff. Fucking pussy. You know what? You know what really fucking grinds my gears, actually? So I do three podcasts right now. This one, which stands miles ahead of the other ones, far more important. Love you guys. But we don't talk sports. That's all good and fine. We have a, we have a great time anyway, anyways, and it's a better podcast because we don't talk sports. The other ones are pretty much focused on sports, but because of like weird scheduling stuff, I never put this bet on record. I mean, my bank account is going to see the profits, but I never went on fucking record with it. I'm bummed out. I'm, bu- I'm bummed out. Well, you say we never talk sports, but every now and then the stars align and there's something that, you know, crosses the poo line. And didn't it turn out that some fucking sports guy is a, is a poo aficionado? Okay. I'm I'm so happy that you caught this. This hit hit on your radar. So Odell Beckham Jr. I actually have his jersey in my closet. He used to be a New York Giants football player, and he's a fucking superstar, wide receiver, a bit of a diva, takes himself ultra seriously. Um, he kind of should because he is the shit. <laughs> pun intended. And he plays for the Browns. Another pun intended. But apparently, some. Uh, I don't even, I guess podcast host, I guess she's a podcast host. Have you ever heard of the No Jumper podcast? Have you heard of this? No. With I think his name is Adam G or Adam V or something. He's some like former uh, pro BMX rider. Um, and he's like a famous like YouTube celebrity vlogger dude. He's married to like a porn star and he's got a very famous podcast called No Jumper. And we talked about. Or I talked about it on a recent Between Two Flushes, and we might have talked about it on Patreon, where a couple like social media influencers talk, talk, social media influencers talked about a story they had with like a blowjob gangbang with a sports team. Same yeah, podcast, like sucked everybody's dick on the team. Yeah, same podcast, different girl, different story, different sport. But this girl talked about how Odell Beckham liked to get shit, liked to get shit on his chest or shit on i guess just shit on so like you you could shit anywhere on him it doesn't have to be the chest it could be like his foot or his i I honestly i only heard like 30 seconds of the podcast i don't know she might have went into further detail on the podcast did you hear this did you hear the sound clip or did you only read the headline no i i just saw like quick stuff while scrolling scrolling through twitter like this guy's into poop he likes scat play that's another thing that's kind of confused me. Um, the terminology. Like, <laughs> if if I take a shit in the toilet, it's poop. But if I take a shit on somebody's chest, it's scat? Like, nobody ever says, like, oh, I just scat in my pants. Or I stepped in dog scat. It seems to only be scat when someone gets a boner. No, scat is used to refer to some animal poops. Is it? Yes. Is that what the scat man? Where did you learn that? Did the scat man tell you that? 
No. All right. Well, anyway, I'm looking it up. We're just assu- I mean, we're we're, terminology how can I aside. To that? Terminology aside, going back to this guy and his fetish for turds. What's up? Because I I just assumed you would look into this more than I would, or or you like this guy so much you don't even want to tarnish his legacy by finding out he's a a shit eater. I have his jersey, but the way he's treated my former team since he's left has bummed me out. So I'm not as big of a fan of him. And either way, I'd keep it real. No, I listened. I read the headline. And I listened to like the 40 second cutout spot that I think Barstool had, or I don't know some aggregator had on their site. And it was pretty much just some girl talking about how he arranged a sexual rendezvous. Uh, got, I think got a private jet to flyer and like made sure she didn't shower for a day and wasn't wearing any underwear. Um, Oh, he really likes poop. There is no non shitty way that pun unintended. There's no non bad way of saying this. So I'm just going to kind of say it. We'll see where this goes. I think, the girl is like too ugly for Odell Beckham. Look, if if poop is your thing, maybe uh, you have you to go p- down a few tiers. You're probably not the most discriminating type. Because I imagine, like, if you're going, if you're running through Victoria's Secret models, it's gonna it's a long journey if you're looking for an angel that's gonna poop on you. For sure, but the guy is like he's one of the bigger superstars in football. Like, football doesn't have, like, huge individual superstars and big names like that, but he's one of the few that have fallen into that mold. And he's got a very particular look. I just feel like the the type of girls that he's probably dealing with are, are, are nuts, dude. They're, in, like, super hot girls, super hot, I would imagine. Now, I understand you probably – your logic is very strong where you might have to go down a few tiers to get shit on or scat played, whatever the fuck they want to call it, whatever these kids want to call yeah, it. Think about it, Jeff. If, put yourself in his shoes. What if like you really liked blowjobs and you really liked uh, doggy style and you continuously hook up with all these girls and they don't want to touch your dick. They don't want to suck your dick. It's missionary. I'm going to lay there. You do what you want. I'm going to just do my crossword puzzles and you're like, oh, well, this isn't really getting the job done. You would probably lower your standards a little bit if it meant you got a, a blowjob and some varied sexual positions thrown in. Standards? What are those? <laughs> <laughs> no, and this I'm... guy, he wants, he wants a poo-poo. He wants some turds. And I'm sorry, you're not going to get that from super hot chicks. Super hot chicks have lines they don't cross. They have lines they don't need to cross. Yeah, but like this girl, you have, did you see her at all? No. She was, I mean, it was, she was busted. She, it was rough to like, like, it made her very unbelievable in my opinion. And it's, and it, this sounds shitty. I hate, I hate saying it like this because ideally we're going to get really big on YouTube and she, you know, she's going to watch this and I'm, I would feel bad, but like it makes her like she's just kind of busted. And all right. So, Maybe thing Jeff. Think about, in maybe my opinion. maybe she has really attractive turds. Maybe she's got, maybe she's got a lot of game. Maybe that's what it is. Here's the thing. And Troy Kwan, one of my favorite MSPH guests ever. A fucking, I believe that he's an epic coxman, and he's doing his thing out there, right? He told an awesome story where he organized a foursome through essentially Tinder, right? Like. There are guys, and, and he's very successful. He's, he's much more successful and famous than I or, or, or a lot of other men are. But, like, dudes who aren't that successful and aren't nearly in the same, like, economic or, or tax bracket as Odell Beckham organize foursomes through Tinder. Like, they, there's some epic hookup stories from random guys, ran, random people from college and just, like, just throughout the world. So, like, he could find, a, like, this girl was, like, an L.A. 2, an L.A. 3. I can't like, find she was a picture busted. of her. She, she was, at least in the podcast, she, she was busted. Look, if, so, you're, if, you're a, if you're a poop guy, if you'll take a crap on him, 
you're a 10. Yeah. That's it. You, you have you have a lot of logic in your in your opinion. I got to give you that. You have a lot of logic, yeah, but I, I you you can't you got to You can keep it. Oh, keep it. Oh, oh my god. That's some shrieking. Are you watching? It's the three girls, right? You're watching yeah. this. So the one sitting by herself is the one that Right? Yeah. I better poop on me. I mean, no. this is several tiers Jeez. below. This is several tiers below. Um, I can't say that I fault Jeff for his words. <laughs> right? It's a it's a delicate thing, and it's a hard it's a hard truth to express. But she's a lot of tears below where Odell Beckham, even if he's getting shit on. Hey, you know what? Playing. I'll tell I. You know, I I bet you it's got something to do with like um. Like, didn't the girl who said Usher gave her herpes, she was like 400 pounds or something. I feel like when you're at that level and you're just, you're loaded, you got more money than you could ever spend in five lifetimes, you can fuck anybody you want. It's almost like, um, you know, if you're like a super rich guy and you have a, a butler that cooks all your meals and shit, and one day you're just like, you know what? I'm going to McDonald's and getting a Big Mac. And you're like, oh, this fucking Big Mac rules. I thought you were going to say, what? you know what? I'm going to fuck that butler in the ass. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if I could pay that butler 100 bucks to shit on me. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to get some scab play from that butler. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, McDonald's. Sure, keep going. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that reminds me. We should introduce um, Odell Beckham to Poop and Kathy. I, I actually think Poop and Kathy's Poop and Kathy is a much hotter woman than this than than the girl that Odell Beckham stooped down to. Odell, <laughs> I can hook you up with Poop and Kathy. Poop and Kathy is an angel on earth. Absolutely, Poop and Kathy. I would never compare this woman to Poop and Kathy. <laughs> All right, bye, Odell Beckham Jr. I'm happy. I'm happy. one for the road. I'm happy Shuddy, in a respectful way, backed up and endorsed my my opinion. Because it, it, it's like an, a crappy thing to say, but it's like, mm, I can't believe you. I can't. I wish you. that we wouldn't get canceled for what I would say. Like, if this was, <laughs> if this was Kevin and I having a conversation 10 or 15 years ago about this woman. Uh, Son. <laughs> A how couple about you, tears. How about you just text very, it to me, Shuddy? Very, uh, uh, just, just text it to nice. me. That's a nice thing. <laughs> I'm sorry, I cut you off. No, I was just telling Shuddy to text me what he can't say. <laughs> right. It's, we would all get canceled. Don't, don't, even, don't even text him, Shuddy. Don't even text him. Man. We're not even cool enough to get canceled. All, all we are are cool enough to lay seeds where we, if we ever got cool to be canceled. <laughs> yeah, like... <laughs> Future canceled landmines. Yeah. Yeah. yeah if I ever find success at some point in my life, there are landmines. Right. Laid. I'm actually trying to get canceled. We got to move into that tier. Oh, that's not that bad, Shuddy. So you're, you're just essentially saying she's a butterface. Oh, big time. Okay. Look, and man. She's rail thin. As somebody who is a butter nothing, I got a fucking five faced at best. And, woof, you take my shirt off, I'm a one. I got wrinkles where there shouldn't be wrinkles. I got tits where there shouldn't be tits. I'm a fucking sloppy mess. Where do you have tits that there shouldn't be tits? Underneath my actual tits. <laughs> no. There's a fucking oh, second wow. row. I'm like a so Star Wars. So have tits. Yeah. You I, have four nips. I look like something that should be dancing in front of the band at the Maz Eisley Cantina. I'm just a gross, roly-poly hot dog beast. So I'd rather you shit on my chest than her. I'll tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> Here they go. The fucking Florida meth head. Man. All right, that was bad. I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> that was I was. Fun. Oh man. Well, hey, uh, has he has he like come out and said anything? Has he denied it, or is he just? He has not denied it. Uh, he hasn't. From what I've seen, he hasn't admitted it, but he's leaned into it. 
What did Are he you, just like tweet out like, "Hey, anybody got a turd hot dog for me?" Uh, he tweeted out, "Can you believe this shit?" <laughs> <laughs> hey, I did play on the Browns. <laughs> uh, he tweeted out things like. Hold on, let me find it again. I left that article. Can't knock me off my pivot no matter what shit's thrown my way. Mm. All right. I like that. It's a good response. And then someone who's also verified said a asterisk on you with a bunch of <laughs> smiley faces. And he uh, responded with, Laughing faces. You know me too well. Shit's crazy. Mm. I don't. Th- I don't believe her. I don't believe her story. I don't know. He's. He's. He sounds like he's owning it, and I feel like uh, you know who are we to kink shame anybody? You know, if he wants to be a pioneer for for poop sex, it's twenty twenty. Fucking why not? If yeah. he's not hurting anybody and it is with a consenting adult, who the fuck cares? Yeah, that chick is whack for sp- for for spilling the beans. That's why you know what I don't That's feel. Someone I take looking back my for apology. a payday. That's what that is. I take back my apology. All right. Well, what, let's let's try a little role play here, Jeff. Let's say you're mm-hmm. out and about okay. walking the streets. Meryl Streep's walking her dog. You cross paths, and she's like. Mm. Scat boy. I bet there's a big fat dick swinging around in those pants. Let's go get a cup of coffee, sir. And you're like, oh, I love your work, Meryl. You guys <laughs> go out. You you hit it off. And uh, she's like, look, I'll let you fuck me, and I'll give you $20,000 if you take a shit on my chest afterwards. And you do it. Would you report it on the podcast? Oh. I feel like, well, I'll let him answer, and then I'll... Give my retort. I'm a gentleman. I don't kiss and tell. So you you would deny the Puminati that scoop of you pooping on multiple Academy well, Award winning actress Meryl nah. Streep? Of course, I tell the Puminati. No, yeah, of course I tell I'll, them, but I'll, no one else. I'll, I'll save it for the Discord. Not not on the <laughs> maybe on the, the Patreon. Paywall. <laughs> yeah, I'll <laughs> at here. And we'll talk about it on Patreon. <laughs> uh, I mean, but allegedly, I think mostly according to her, he like organized the rendezvous like uh, online. I think like through DMs or, or and phone calls. Like it wasn't like just a random like. I think I could get this girl to shit on me. Like it was a calculated effort. So there's like, receipts. I wonder how how many girls he asked to shit on him before he settled on on the 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 fucking Naples, Florida method. Uh, I don't think many, because I think then they would have come out of the woodwork. Like, yeah, he asked me to shit on him. Maybe yeah. maybe we're, we'll see some of that trickle down in the next couple of days. Now that the cat, um, now that the turds out of the down bag. Who effect? <laughs> like, I did see a headline that it does not bother his girlfriend. Okay, he eats poop. Now he eats it. It's not just scat play. I mean, I, how could you like how, if you're into turds and you want turds on your chest? How could that be the end? <laughs> right? No, I know. I'm like, not willing to go that far. I got a big thing for vaginas. I love it when they're placed on my chest and nowhere else. Get the fuck out of here! Come on, that's a different thing. Obviously, poop and vaginas are much different. Okay. Not to him. Here's, uh, do you like your penis licked? Do you like your butthole licked? If you like one lick, you should like the other licked based on your, <laughs> based on your line of thinking, Kevin. <laughs> I've never yeah, you had... You even like your balls and your dick licked. I've never had my butthole licked. It's probably... You never had a rim job? It's probably pretty nice. I imagine it's nice. I feel like I'd want it professionally done. I wouldn't want a girlfriend to do it. <laughs> <laughs> like while she's in the middle of like, ew, 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 ew. Jeff looks behind. He's like, oh, I think we should break up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I want to never see that woman again. <laughs> oh, you're it's a bastard. It's going to happen in a foreign country if I do it. <laughs> you're a bastard. Watch out, Montreal or Vancouver. <laughs> I'm putting a ring on that one. Yeah. 
I'm going real exotic. <laughs> I'm going Toronto. <laughs> oh, <ooh. laughs> oh, can I tongue dart your butt, eh? <laughs> Shuddy, uh, shifting gears here a little bit. Oh, good. You hit me up that you had, how did you put it, an old man moment? An or, I feel old an story. I, I mean, Jesus Christ, how do, at this point, do you not, both of us, not feel old all the time? Well, when my youngest child uh, successfully passed his driver's permit test today, uh, so he's now a driver. You don't, you have to be 16 for that, right? That's not, can you be 15? No. Is that an old law, or am I completely just misremembering this well it's different states i believe yeah i thought i got my permit when i was 15 because i think they bump, bumped it in jersey up to 18 if i'm not mistaken a per- not a permit but your license i think oh my god let's see because i was 17 for sure when i got my driver's license in jersey but i feel like i remember because i when new jersey was much more strict when we were kids than pennsylvania was when uh, when I got my permit in Pennsylvania, the law was uh, you would get a temporary permit the day you passed. Then you could take the driver's test for your license as soon as you got the permanent permit in the mail, which took like two weeks. Oh, okay. So it is still the same in Jersey. Um, you can start going, get your permit at 16. You have to get six hours behind the wheel or some shit, and then you can take your driver's test at 17. But I think, I think the rule is like um, you get a provisionary license, so you can only drive with yourself or maybe one other person in the car. You can't... Like when I got my license, it was just like, here you go, have fun. And I could pack my car with as many people as you're legally allowed and go on a road trip. I think they, it's, there's certain restrictions on it. Like maybe you can't drive out of state... Um, you can, so I remember having a restriction on mine where you couldn't drive past nine o'clock until you were 18 unless it was going like to and from work oh. or honestly, and I think this was like a, a, a loophole or if you did driver's ed, you could drive past nine at 17. Yes. That's how right. it was in Pennsylvania. Your junior license okay. Until 18, you couldn't drive after m- between midnight and 6.30 a.m. unless it was for work. Um, and then you automatically got your normal license at 18 or if you had uh, behind-the-wheel driver's ed training. Okay. But They're pretty similar. Bradley has to have his permit for six months now before he can actually get his license. I also thought that was a rule for me too, but I thought you could do it. Eh, I don't know. I'm I'm fucking. I'm sound. I sound stupid. I I'm not exactly <laughs> sure. <laughs> I don't know. Whatever. I'm trying to keep up here. So, are you going to? Are you going to teach him? Or are you going to like pay for a driver's ed? How I'll let him work? teach me. No. Yeah. Um. We're still debating. Um, gotcha. Because I don't tend to be the most calm person. Uh, especially when it comes to him. Uh, so what do you mean? It might calm not person be... as a passenger? Or just in general? No, no, just in general when he does something that annoys me or anything like that. Yeah, He knows that's... how to push my buttons very well. And uh, I think if anybody in the family is going to do it successfully, it would be Sharon. Uh, because she's got a much lighter touch than I do. Um, but we are considering um, doing driver's ed or uh, driving lessons because the one driving school here locally in Quakertown, they actually administer the driver's test and give the license. Uh, it's like a one stop shop. Yeah. So we won't have to deal with going to. Pen dot or anything like that for his driver's test just to get his picture taken for the license. So that's, uh, and it, it, it'll probably make him 
e- it make it easier for him to learn. Totally. When he's so when not I was- in there with me all stressed out and then him stressed out. And I learned to drive better. Like my father tried on multiple occasions to teach me how to drive uh, a manual transmission <laughs> car. And it did not go well any of the times, but I had a friend's mom who taught me how to drive it. And I, it, I picked it up in one afternoon. Yeah. I had two lessons with like a driver coach and that did more for me than like the, however many times I went out from my father. Cause pretty much like you said, it's like, I'm worried about stressing out my father and what I need to be worried about is the loss of the road yeah. and driving. You know yeah. what I mean? So, the, and there is also like, it is pretty comforting. At least it was when I was like 16 of like knowing the guy next to me had a break, right? Like, like he could straight up, like just stop the car if I fucked up too bad. Yeah. You see, I only, I didn't get much instructions beforehand. Um, I pretty much just knew the only thing I knew about driving was what I saw in movies. So the first time I got behind the wheel, and I think this was with the instructor, I fucking were driving and he's like, all right, pull over and park here. So we pull over to like the side of the road and I just got out of the car and the car starts moving. And he's like, what are you doing? And I jump back in. I'm like, why, why, why? He's like, you have to put it in park. I was like, oh, shit, my bad. I just see in movies... You know, when they show somebody getting to their destination, the car just stops and they get out. I thought, you stop and the car stops. I thought you had to actually well, press on the gas to make it go again. Okay, first lesson, there are gears. Well, I never learned how to drive stick. I still to this day don't know how to drive stick. Uh, I didn't but I didn't know at the time. still a gear? Or no? I don't Whatever. Know. Anyways, keep going. I, I went to... Park is not a gear. <laughs> it just came to mind. Trivia Pursuit guy. I didn't even know that you had to change the oil. I thought you just had to put gas in it. So when I got my license, I was still at Bing Bong School. And they let you um, drive to school and have a car on campus if you were a senior. And you had to like fill out paperwork and get approved and shit. And they did. And uh, you know, I was making trips between Jersey and Massachusetts. And it got to a point where... Uh, forget oh you know what it might have been before i got approved to take my car to bing bong school so i left it at home and i let my stepbrother drive it around while i was gone and i had driven it so much without ever changing the oil that while he was out it just shit its pants and died my brother that happened to me with my first car that i came to california with you remember picking me up on the side of the 110 yeah yeah, my brother did that shit. That was from not changing the oil? Yeah. And that big old beast you used to drive around? It wasn't a big beast. It was a Pontiac Grand Am. I remember it being a big car. I remember at my first apartment, you trying to like pull into the parking garage, and it was a big ordeal because it was too tight. It was tight the of second it. car that I got, uh-huh. which was an epic piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> I remember last thing, the last thought that i have about this whole driving stuff i remember going on the road the first time and it being like a fucking serious high like it was so awesome driving oh, yeah. by myself the first time like one of the coolest experiences or feelings in my life yeah freedom it was like the world's my oyster and that that yeah. feeling doesn't last very long nope. no no it does not and it's like oh fuck it you drive i don't want to do this i just fuck <laughs> off and not pay attention Shotgun. Yeah, for real. Um, so now that we've got the whole YouTube element incorporated, and I got shit for my hair and the Easter egg, this is this is pretty bad, right? What I'm working yeah. with? I don't even know it's what to do with too. it at this You need point. to get you a haircut, man. I haven't gotten a haircut since, I think, February? Or maybe March? Yeah, but I got I got a mullet going. Your hair is in that weird in-between stage. I know. I hate that. I've grown my hair out a couple of times in my life, and there's a certain point where my hair reaches, 
and then it like flowers out, it like waves out at the bottom, and it looks like a fucking tulip. Yeah, that happens to my hair. If you guys remember that phase where I didn't cut my hair. Yeah, but you got thicker hair, hair, so it looks better. What is that? What's the explanation behind that? It's just shitty hair syndrome. I feel like Shuddy has the best hair out of the three of us. Well, that's I have a lot of things you guys don't. Class, charm, looks, a brains. vagina, a home. Oh, okay, yeah. Oh, oh, we're making fun of them. Yeah, you eat boogers. <laughs> <laughs> but like, I don't know. I, there was there a was a point pubic hair. where I was thinking maybe uh, just let it roll, just do it, keep going. I don't know. I look I look so shitty with long hair, and my hair is so fucking thin and fine that like. You have know, a, a fucking awful. Where your part is, your natural part, it's just a stripe right here. It looks awesome. <laughs> yes, that's you're gonna feel great about that being on YouTube. Trust me. Oh no. Hey, I edited. I spent like an hour editing a video because of the shot that you just gave the entire audience. Because it it looks like I got a bald spot. Yeah. I'm We're trying to old. I'm trying to outrace and, and, the feet of the camera. Like I'm trying to tilt my head down and look up real quick before it goes away. <laughs> I can't do it. Your camera's shitty enough for you're getting close, honestly. I know. Let me tilt it down. Yeah, it looks like I got a fucking ass crack on my head. Yeah, and then you got a decent nice you got a decent patch over the uh headset. Oh, a bald spot? But it, yeah, but it's also like the headset is kind of matting your hair down, and uh, yeah, like you know. when my hair gets wet because it's so my hair is so thin. Like I'm not balding; just each strand of hair is so fucking thin, it doesn't accumulate to anything. So like when my hair gets wet, it looks like you can see almost my entire scalp. It just fucking sucks. I fucking hate my hair. I suppose there's yeah, my there's hair. worse things to to miss out on the lottery of life in like getting good hair. It's like, well, you know, at least I have both my feet. Can't really get too bummed out about that. Yeah. But doesn't one of them have gout? Uh, well, yeah, that's a good point. I can still use it though. It's still usable. All right. But I, 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 I walk by a place that has, uh, that does outdoor hair cutting. And I took the name down. I'm like, Oh fuck. I might go for it. I might just just get rid of this these these awful awful locks. It is very nice. I think they're though. moving it indoors though. One of my my home I just got my hair cut. My home he's a barber. Um and he said that he's been working outside for the past couple months, but they're moving indoors, I think, this this upcoming week. Or this how, week. with how long you've lived there, do you not have a regular haircut place? Me? Kevin. Yes. I mean, I do. I go to that place where the lady from Clerks cut my hair. Yeah, but that doesn't... You, you don't have, like, a, a bar... Uh, your own... I don't know. I did, but it just got too expensive. Dude was, um... Like, a, like an upscale barber. Like an old-school dude. And, like... I went there for a couple of years, and he just slowly, slowly bumped it up by like five bucks five bucks ten bucks then it got to the point where i was just like dude i can't how much were you paying per haircut uh 55 bucks and then what the fuck yeah jesus christ i know and he and then he bumped it up to 65 and i went like once and i was like nope that's it i'm out yep i mine was 29 dollars today yeah, mine's like twenty or twenty-five. I just send my my dude thirty, but he does it in like his backyard. I take bong rips and shit. It's pretty sweet. <laughs> <laughs> That's perfect. Like my, I'm you know I have the same questions about your your barber strategy as Shetty. I, you know, I know the guy and I've known the guy for a while. But the barber that I had before that, even when he cut it, closed his shop down, I went to his house. So I need to have someone like. They're like on file in my in my phone, like ready to call. Retainer, we'll call them. I was, I was thinking because thinking... I, I want to because I want to go to one of those places that does the outdoor stuff. But then this fucking heat wave has been insane. 
It has been a. I've been watching it. It has been oppressive out there. Yeah, wasn't uh, it like over 120 the other day? In Palm Springs, I think it was 121. In oh, Studio yeah. City, it hit 111. And you know, we what was that like? So I tried to stay indoors for most of it, uh, and so I, I went to I, I walked to the block, you know, down the street to drop a Netflix disc off in the in the mailbox, and just on the walk there. It felt like somebody was holding a candle up to my eyeballs. Like it was it was sweltering hot. Anywhere that was tattooed on me that was showing was like ablaze. But my eyes in particular, the heat was so bad on my eyes, it literally felt like a candle was just like right up against them. Like painful heat. Yeah. Um, I've been out there in the summer and in the area that you both live in it's not oppressively hot usually it I mean, gets much hotter by him yeah it's always it's i always know that I, i'm technically but, in the valley and the valley oh, is notorious for being way hotter i haven't been to your new place in the summer or was i out there in august last year who the f- yeah i can't remember All but right. it, it was so hot my fucking balls were dragging on the floor behind me like a wedding gown it was ridiculous. Like my air, my air conditioning could barely even keep up with it. And at one point, I almost lost power. So I was watching a movie, sitting in my my living room in the dark because I was trying to keep as many electronics off as possible. Because you know, a couple of weeks ago the power went out in the building for a couple hours. So I'm trying to not like overuse things. And all of a sudden, I hear the AC go like. <laughs> and I had the lights on like a little bit because I got a dimmer on them. So I had them up a little bit, and they faded and went completely off. But the TV and, and the PlayStation didn't. So I was like, oh, God, hold it together. <laughs> Fucking hold it together, please. And the AC eventually like kicked back up a couple seconds later. But I know a lot of people in the Valley lost power for a little bit. It was just, I mean, it's insane. It, you can't be indoors in 111-degree heat without the AC on. Everybody's running their fucking AC, and it's just overloading things. Yeah, my don't buddies. Don't get Jeff started on the rolling brownouts. <laughs> yeah, don't get don't get me going. My buddy, uh, I went to my buddy's apartment or excuse me house for a fantasy football draft, and it was a yeah, it was 112 or 111. That's what it was, 111. It's fucking hot, dude. I've I've been in that kind of heat once, and it was at Las Vegas, like or in Las Vegas, like 12 years ago. I remember it was 115 once. It's fucking terrible, but. I mean, I didn't do shit outside. I went right to his house and just chilled inside, drank beers, and we did the fancy football drafts. I am not dealing with that heat. And I honestly think your situation is borderline unbearable. Like having the air conditioner on the fritz like it is, fuck that, dude. And not it's having a it in my room today. Not having it in my room today, it's not bad. It's 73 right now. Oh, shit. Yeah. Yeah, but allegedly the, we got the, hit with a cold front. <laughs> the uh the you know there's been a, a ton of fires too so the air's been all unhealthy and i guess i don't know what it is but anytime there's a, a super hot day like if you look at the weather app on your iphone it always says unhealthy air quality and dude the the two days where it was over 110 it was it was just like skull and crossbone emojis like do not go outside <laughs> unhealthy air is that because it just bakes the pollution out of things i'm confused, confused by that and like it's because troubling. I think the humidity doesn't allow the pollution to dissipate into the atmosphere and holds it down in general circulation. It's that would sc- be my guess. Oh shit! Say it's kind of scary just how like comfortable and chill I am with seeing un- unhealthy air quality on my weather app. <laughs> like, all right, well, whatever. What's going on on Twitter? Yeah, like, what am I supposed to do? Like, just sit like this in my house with my fucking shirt over my face? Like, how do you beat I mean, it? Like, what do I do? All right, it's you like, don't all right, go outside. Thanks, iPhone, but, like, isn't the air I'm breathing, like, leaking in from outside? <laughs> yeah, technically, yeah. So it's like, all right, I mean, cool. We're... Thanks. What, what am I supposed to do? It's kind of like when you walk... California's had this weird, weird law in the books where... They have to post signs everywhere 
saying like um this this facility is known to have chemicals known to the state of California to lead to cancer and it's I, it's from the paint so yeah, anything lead, that's painted or whatever yeah anything that's painted they have to put a sign up letting you know like oh when you walk in here beware there's paint and it's like okay well fucking cool everything's painted what am i supposed to do with this information Am I, am I supposed to stand out front of the grocery store and pay people to go in and be like, hey, I need a loaf of bread, a couple of apples, uh, some milk. You, you you just grab that for me while you're in there? Like, you go get cancer for me. Yeah. What What am I supposed to do with this? I can't live if I don't go inside anywhere. It's like that Mark Ruffalo movie, Dark Waters. Where we might just wake up with black black mouths in a couple of years. Like, yeah, it was all that un- unhealthy air quality we put on the the iPhone weather app. We told you. Hey, you know, I mean. the way I look at it, if all these old school Hollywood legends live, you know, Kirk Douglas died at 103. Couldn't even make words at the end. Like, why, did you, why did you say? That guy was in, you know, uh, Hollywood back in the day when... They had to put out smog alerts like, hey, it's not even healthy to go outside and you could see just an orange cloud hanging in the sky. Like Everybody just stay indoors today. So if that dude lived through that and made it to 103, I think we'll be all right. There's a whole bunch of fucking Priuses and Teslas farting around here. Sure. Yeah, he outlived a whole bunch of viruses and diseases, but yeah, I got you. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, sorry. <laughs> you don't have to touch on that one. <laughs> you guys get it. All right. You get well, the energy I'm putting out there. Shuddy, yeah, what did yeah, you yeah. text us about Madden? Is that supposed to be off the record? What's going on? Uh, I I didn't know if it was something that we sh- that was worth any com- not worth any conversation, but uh, they replaced in the new update. They added Colin Kaepernick. Is that true? Yes. I didn't know if that was like a phony headline. No, really. when you and when you it pops up on the screen when you load it the first time that you can bring him back. That you can be <laughs> the one to bring him back. Nice. Um and then they replaced the spike touchdown celebration with a solidarity celebration. Nice. Well, I mean, I'm happy that EA Sports really cares about black people. So I, uh, that's more, I think I'm sure they had to get NFL permission. Who knows how that shit is working. I mean, cool. More yeah. characters in the video game. I'm not going to hate on that. I just think it's a bummer that he's better than Kyler Murray. He's already better than my quarterback. What the fuck, man? He's like three, three rating points below Carson Wentz. It's a bummer. I just, I guess I'm more mad about my own quarterback situation. <laughs> Fuck, dude. Maybe I got to pick up Colin Kaepernick off of waivers. Did, People um, have been mad about Madden, though. I am not going to pile oh. on. Yeah, because I, 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 I don't know where I saw this, but um, does it have like the worst rating out of the series on Metacritic? Or something along those lines? Are people really bummed about this one? Yes. For some, uh, yeah. I haven't read anything about why, so I couldn't. Is there anything comment. that bums you guys out? No. It's glitchy at kicking for me sometimes. Uh, yeah. But other than that, I have no, no complaints. I mean, it's pretty much identical to last year. <laughs> I and thought I that think, was an internet thing, too. I didn't think it was, like, the video game. It could be, because my franchise is in the cloud, so it's very likely that's what it is. Um, yeah, I just feel like it's people who aren't really a fan of Madden or didn't play it a lot, or as much as me and Shuddy, just hating on it just to hate on it. It's, like, one of those, like, social media Twitter things. Oh, it's getting it, review-bombed? Yeah, like, the the video game doesn't play, like, any worse than... The other ones, I don't get the complaints. Like, were you expecting a bunch of features or things that you probably shouldn't have been? Did like, you... I don't get it. And now you have, you got, it's just like dumb. <sighs> this is going to sound weird because I don't, 
this isn't fully my my angle, but like or my shit usually, but it's like dumb liberal bullshit. Like they're calling they're calling this an, a, a monopoly. Like oh god, the NFL needs to break up the EA Sports football game monopoly. Like get the fuck out of here. They've done it the best for the past thirty years. How about you shut the fuck up and stop playing the video game if you don't like it? Like what the fuck? Like. I don't know. Like it's just this whole social media trend that we've seen over years, and what I, I just think it's people hating on things they don't even like in the first place, and just trying to tear things down because they like watching the world well, catch on fire. That seems to be the new thing. Is um, you know review bomb. Well, I guess it's not necessarily new, but there's quite a few other things that I'm getting review bombed, like Mulan. People are pissed off that Disney put a thirty dollar tag on it for Disney Plus. So people were just giving it one star review for that. I guess the chick that plays Mulan took China's side in the whole Hong Kong versus China kerfuffle, and sure she had a choice. Yeah, I know. So people are pissed off about that. Uh, and then I saw people are also review bombing The Boys season two, which I watched mm. the first three episodes of since we since it dropped and enjoyed as I have and good also transition enjoyed it. that's why you're a pro that's why you get paid to do this good transition <laughs> why is that getting review bombed because people are salty that they only released the first three episodes and not the entire season so they're they're all bombarding one star reviews on amazon that's what it fucking is right my me and my me and my brothers are trying to figure this out last night that was the only guess that that we can come up with i think it was cheech but it's like I watched the first two episodes, not the first three. My brother, Bill, complained about the first episode. After the first episode, I was like, this is fucking awesome. I don't I don't know what you're talking about. I, I love the boys. I thought it was sick. I got I still gotta watch the third one. Um third one's good. But it's on like it's like two and a half stars on Amazon Prime. It's like what the fuck? Yeah, I, I clicked on the the cause you can sort it by review, so I just looked at a bunch of the one stars. And it's all people bitching like, Netflix gives me all the episodes at once. How come you don't do that? And it's like, hey, Breaking Bad also put out one episode a week. Are you going to go and give that one star? I can't watch it as much as I want to. Everybody's so fucking entitled. My God. Right. I feel like we've had this conversation a million times about what do you like more about whether you what what you like more between like episode dumps like Netflix or sometimes Amazon Prime Hulu whatever or if you like weekly installments and I'm pretty sure we're all just kind of like whatever as long as it's good like exactly. however you want to put it put, yeah, put it together I, I was my initial reaction to seeing that it was only the first three episodes and was releasing an episode every Friday. I was bummed. I will say that. I was looking forward to like binging it this weekend. But I'm also not upset that I won't blow through it in three days and then have to sit around for a year waiting for, you know, I like yeah. that it, it's going to be spread out. I feel like getting a three episode dump at the beginning is, is kind of nice. It gives you like a nice crash course into the season and then it's spaced out. Like, I don't know. I'm one of those people where I hit a certain point in my life where I'm very settled in my ways. I know what I like and my wants are not all that extreme. I like comic books. I like movies. I like video games and I don't really get bored. If I, I don't need 10 episodes at once and to just fucking mainline. Oh, I have to watch every single one. I'm not sleeping at all. The entire season in one day. I don't need that. If I, if I happen to blow through those three episodes in one day, like, like you guys, if, if you blow through those three episodes, you just spent three hours on the couch and you need something more to do. There's a fucking new Madden out. There's other shows. I, I, I don't feel like I need... And I, f I feel like when I watch stuff that quickly, it doesn't retain, like, it doesn't stay in my head. You know? Yeah, you don't, like, savor the flavor, I guess. I'll take it any way I can get it. If a show wants to dump all the episodes at once, I'll go through it at my own leisure. And if they want to sprinkle them out a week at a time, I'll fucking take that, too. Whatever, man. More important things to worry about. I don't have any about. standards, either. 
chicks, <laughs> shows, whatever. No standards. <laughs> <laughs> so, Shuddy, how many did you watch? I watched all three of them. What'd you think? Oh, I loved it. Yeah, it's good shit. I'm, I'm really excited for it. Like, I'm really glad. I'm I'm First curious th- what the what the budget is for that show because some of it's just like, man, this is this is, you know, movie quality special effects, and it's only a half hour shorter than most movies. Each episode. I've also started reading the comic book. What did you think? Because I didn't like the comic. I got the first trade years ago because I knew they based Huey on Simon Pegg. So it's just Simon Pegg drawn on the pages. And I got the first trade. I didn't like it. And then when they were releasing the show, I read it again just to confirm. And I was like, yeah, I don't like this comic. I really enjoy it. I'm almost through the third trade. And I have the fourth sitting on the shelf across from me, ready to go. My issue with the comic is it seems like it's just trying too hard to be edgy. Yeah. Couldn't you make the same complaint about the show? The show's kind of more toned down. The show is very toned down. (laughs) I think it's a tent. Compared Uh, to... Obviously, I can't compare it. Yeah, yeah. It no the the violence and stuff is a lot is I don't know what the right word is um, visceral it's a yeah a lot it's more graphic visceral that's a perfect word Jeff I mm, thank that is thank you that is <laughs> um I've been waiting. A while. To so they tone one. they tone that down. Uh, I feel like the sex is more extreme in the comic, and uh, the cursing. Well, I you know clearly I don't mind cursing, but it seems forced. And if something seems forced, it's it's like all right, I get it. You know, you know the f word, and everything. The comic is, book. Yeah. Okay. It's it's it seems like it was. I remember when I was a kid, when I was like eight or nine. And I first started using the F word around my friends. It was every word because I thought yep. the more I use it, the more cool I seemed. And it kind of seems that's the way they went with the comic. Either way, think, show kicks ass. I'm into the show. Yeah, I can't keep up with the, the, the comic book conversation, but Homelander is one of my favorite written characters in anything in yeah. the past few years. It's gotten to the point now where I can read his facial s- signs and it's like, Oh, he's about to do something super scummy right now. And then he does I, something super scummy. Such like, a yeah. piece of shit. Oh, he sucks. <laughs> it's awesome. He's such a dickhead. He sucks so bad. <laughs> so fucking bad. It's great. He's a great yeah. villain. Oh, Thank yeah. you. Thank you, Homelander. Yeah. Uh, but I, I, I don't know. I, I feel like the, the three episodes that they put out, it was a good way to start things. Because I, I feel... Like they, those three felt tied together, and then when episode three ends, it really gets you on the hook for like, ooh, all right, the boys, color me intrigued. <laughs> hmm. See, I'm not a huge what's butcher fan. Oh, I love him. I, I, I like Carl Urban. I, I like I like him a lot. I he's like getting him praised for his performance in The Boys. And I he's he not bad ass. himself. I don't know. I just don't love the character. I like him a lot. I like the character in the show. I like Carl Urban's work as him. I'm a big Carl Urban fan. I liked him in the Star Trek movies. I liked him as Dread. I feel Dread is extremely underrated and underappreciated and needs a sequel. Agree with that wholeheartedly. But I'm very yeah, happy we're, we're that... We're a pro-Dread uh, pod. Pro that Dread podcast. Carl Urban is uh, getting steady work and in popular stuff. I yeah, the violence, I, the violence I, in that show is so on point. It's so gory. <laughs> I, love I it. there's that scene in the third episode. There's with, quite a few spoilers. With oh yeah, that one. No, I mean with the motorboat. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, when that happened, I was like, "Oh my god!" It's very over the top, but it's <laughs> it's an over the top that I like. This is over the top done right. I feel like the comic is over the top done Wrong. a little poorly. 
But uh, I, I also have you guys started any of Raised by Wolves? No, that on is HBO? not the other show that I've watched. This I don't weekend. know if it's going on my queue. I still got to catch up to Lovecraft Country. Can you just give us a couple minutes on the late, uh, the last episode of that? Is that is that still going strong? I'm still one behind. I've I've watched the first three. It Whatever, threw me for right. a loop because I kind of felt what they were setting up in the first episode was going to be the whole arc, and it sort of resolves itself in episode two, and then episode three is a haunted house episode. So I, I'm wondering if they're sort of doing an anthology thing, like every episode is going to be a different horror element. But I, I still I have episode four on my DVR and haven't gotten around to it yet. But I'm I'm planning on sticking with it. And I heard a lot of good stuff about Raised by Wolves, and they did the same thing. They dropped the first three episodes on HBO Max, and then they're going to put the rest of the season out week by week. And that first episode is batshit crazy. That, I know nothing of this show. What is it about? It batshit in a good way or bad yes, way? good way. It is wild. Okay. It's, they, I couldn't believe when the episode ended, I, it felt like they shot their load. It was like, where are we going from here? So it's basically, the show starts with Earth is destroyed, humanity abandons Earth, and they sent two androids, two very human-like androids with frozen human embryos to a habitable planet somewhere. So they, they get there, and the man robot somehow hooks the female robot up to the embryos, and nine months later... Kids are born. So they are Is just Prometheus trying... a TV show? Well, it's Ridley Scott. Yeah. So, you know, same kind of theme, but that's about all yeah. I'll say. The first episode, it's, it's fucking wild. It's wild. Is it? I feel like it's a little too science fiction y in my be. taste. It might be. But you liked Prometheus, didn't you? I liked it a lot. Yeah. I liked the first he one. He said the best thing about seeing the original Avengers was the Prometheus trailer. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> Shuddy is still yeah. so salty about that. <laughs> Glad that take landed with you. <laughs> it's, it's one of those shows that makes me thirsty though. It's very, it's, it's lacking color. You know, they do the whole gray scale thing. So there, there isn't a lot of color to it. It's very dusty. And I, I feel like I constantly need to be sipping water while I watch it. So make of that right. what you will. But you're gonna give it a, you you watched all three or just the no first no no one? just the first one, and okay. I dug it. And I, I I'm at this point I'm hooked. I got to see what happens next. I watched the first three episodes of The Vow, that Nexium sex cult documentary on HBO. Oh, was that some horny stuff? No, it wasn't horny enough. I thought it kind of sucked. I wanted to see like more mushroom stamping and and branding and like some sexual <laughs> deviancy. <laughs> deviancy? Oh, it was yeah, all just fucking dry hand jobs. Really stupid. Dude, it was fucking I don't know. It was a lot of like the first three episodes was just a lot of this guy's bullshit drivel and 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 just word salad cult speak that I really didn't understand they didn't do a good job of explaining i don't understand the appeal of this guy and it's not just like a you know like how could anyone uh join a cult it's like beyond that it's like how did you join this fucking cult like this guy has zero charisma they kept showing like b-roll of him playing like an indoor volleyball league with a fucking headband and knee pads oh i'm in and i I I'm, join, I'm joining that I cult. I hated it. What's up? I'm joining that cult. I hate Indoor it. volleyball? Say no more. Where the fuck do they play indoor <laughs> volleyball in upstate New York? Who am I what? parking? So it was is weird. It, is it three episodes? Did you watch all of it, or is there more? I think there's six, but okay. I've, I watched the first three. And, and I you're think not it's coming it? out like week in, week out. So, okay. so I don't think all three dropped originally, but... I, as of today, I'm pretty sure four are on, on HBO Max. I'm going to keep watching it because it's set mostly, or a lot of it is set in my hometown, and they actually, like, mention and, and, and discuss, like, where I'm from. Jeff so, Clark? 
<laughs> Clifton Park. Yeah. So We're I'm here in Clifton Jeff. Park, the, the home of Jeff Clark. Yeah. Noted poop uh, eater. So I'm still, you know, vaguely interested, and I'm going to I'm gonna give it a shot. I'm going to keep watching it, but it, it kind of sucked. Oh, it did. It why isn't sucked. anybody on this show fucking? Do they talk about any of the sex stuff that they did? No, not as of yet. They, they're they getting to it now, like this. So it was like a, three uh, episodes about a sex cult, and they haven't gotten into the sex stuff yet. Right. They haven't like, shown off the Blumpkin room. It was like a self-help Ponzi scheme, right? And then as it becomes, as they discuss it, they, they, the, the members start to figure out there's like another department of this organization that they love that is a sex cult. And that's, it took them three episodes to get there. And the first three episodes were mostly fucking lame and boring. And I was, I was in there for the branding for the sex cult. Like, you know, let's, let's degrade some humans. That's what I'm here for. <laughs> and I don't know. Or hopefully episode four. <laughs> hopefully oh, there better be a fucking gimp in here somewhere. Come on. Episode four. I mean, Spit in my turn, face. I tuned in for some gnarly. Come on. What the fuck is this? I don't want to hear this guy's word salad. This cult is stupid. Yeah. I mean, it's like now, class now action I don't park. I don't even feel bad for the victims. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> how, did you, how did you get duped by this fucking retard? It's like class- I apologize. I didn't, mean, I didn't mean to use the R word. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. That's- <laughs> yeah. I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm trying to get partially canceled, not fully canceled. I, I don't mean any any disrespect to people with mental issues. <laughs> so your, your whole issue with it is you're not impressed by this cult. Most cults, when you watch documentaries on them, you're like, Oh, I could see myself in there. Yup. But this one, you're like, Oh, these fucking idiots. I don't want to play volleyball. I don't want to get I jacked mean, off by any of these people. Right. I mean, you got like with Waco, you got, they got some some music going on there. There's a lot of land. They got some guns. They have some some I don't know forward and yet obviously super lofty ideals. These other guys just said nothing the whole time and had uh, an un, un an unreal sense of confidence, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, an unawareness that I just don't get how he was able to build so many followers. I, I, it's weird. It's weird. And Well, the people that get sucked gonna... into cults don't exactly strike me as intellectuals, you know? And so, we're kind of we're dumb-dumbs, too. So that means the people that get tricked into joining cults are either even fucking dumber and lonelier than we are. Yeah, they're not. Yeah, they're not. They don't fit the Puminati standards. I'll tell oh, you that. Volleyball. Pff, peace. I'm out. <laughs> fucking dude the b-roll of this guy playing volleyball with fucking knee pads oh i wanted <laughs> to give this guy a wedgie i was so mad how is this guy brandon chicks you gotta be fucking kidding me. so wait that i like, i thought that was just like an ex, like a, an example your brain came up with so this cult was branding people because i never yes. followed it too yes. closely in the news this full branded people with his initials like, on their butts <laughs> The uh, no, next to their vaginas. Oh, yeah, dude. He would have, and he like it was. It was like almost like a a a sex cult again, Ponzi or like. Yeah, it was like a scheme. So it was like it was one of those uh, Fonzi schemes. He like he uh hmm, he delegated like the sexual. Uh, he delegated a lot of the duties to like the chicks, the bottom bitches underneath him, right? Maybe, maybe he so, told like, that lady to go poop on Odell Beckham. Uh, yeah, like he had a bottom bitch working for him that was like collecting all the collateral, they would call it, and she would like organize the branding ceremony and do all this crazy shit. So we're not even like into his involvement, and like this fool is the one that was arrested by the FBI. So. Yeah, again, it's like, how do you go three episodes about uh, three episodes deep into a, a documentary about a sex cult, and you're not into the sex yet? Like, it's it's a bummer. Yep, that sounds and pretty lame. Yeah, bring in the sex stuff. Yeah, for once, for God's sakes.
Well, I watched most of the first season of Cobra Kai. Oh, all right. I've heard good things. I saw the Karate Kid movies in the theater. Maybe not one, because I think that came out pretty early. But I was 100% caught up in the 80s karate hype. I took fucking five years of Taekwondo as a kid from when I was five years old till I was 10. And then I think I started back up again when I was around 13. <laughs> Yikes. I still can't beat anybody up, but I did it. And I, I think I may have only seen each Karate Kid movie maybe twice. So that was kind of why I was never in a rush to watch Cobra Kai, even though I heard it was really good. I watched the first two episodes on YouTube Red because the first three were free. Um, so I had seen those and I knew I liked it. And then when both the that season and the new season hit Netflix, I dove back in and I've watched almost the entire first season. It's so fucking good. I really, really like it. Are you a Karate it, Kid guy? I loved the Karate Kid movies, yes. Uh, I remember being... Uh, I don't even know what the context I would do it in, but I vividly remember. Do you remember in Karate Kid 2 where uh, Ralph Macchio is in that weird uh, Okinawan bar and the guy's chopping through the ice blocks? The sideways ice blocks. I don't. I haven't seen that movie in forever. Well, there's a scene where they, where they're like seeing who can chop th- sideways through sheets of ice, like you know. Yeah, inch like thick, in um, like chopping through boards, but ice. Like in the Mortal Kombat, Mortal Kombat Two, in between fight things, did yes. they have that? Yes. Some yes, something exactly like that. So did that. you try to karate chop a big block no, of ice when but you were a kid? He, D- Daniel, uh, D- would Mister Mi- He saw Mister Miyagi do something, and it was like, all right, shut. He's doing some praying motion, some tai chi shit, and then he chopped through all the ice blocks. Uh, but I, as a kid, I would do. I remember doing, doing that stoop stupid thing for some reason i really liked karate kid did you want like some kid was bullying you at school and you walked up to him you're like oh you you watch this no it was probably to do something stupid yeah. like karate chop pencils that's probably if i had to if i had to go out on a limb and say exactly what it was it was karate chopping through fucking p- number two pencils that sounds about right shuddy is your playstation on fire it sounds like it, doesn't it? Either that or your your tea is done. <laughs> you got to get no, a it's... you got to get an air duster, man. Dust them vents out. I did, you know what? I did blow it out. That's why it's been hasn't you haven't heard it for a couple of weeks. It must be dusty again. I'll handle it. Jared, can you dust my PlayStation again? <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Uh well, shit, I don't, let me check my notes, because I don't think I've got anything else to review. Um, oh, yeah, Jeff, didn't you give your wrong birthday out on the podcast last week? I think so. <laughs> How'd you uh, get your fucking birthday wrong? You're, you're still in your, you're, you just made it to your mid-30s officially, and you're fucking forgetting your birthday already? Yeah, I gave. Well, I mean, obviously, I knew the date, but I gave the wrong day of the week. I told everyone. I guess it was. I guess I told everyone it was Wednesday, and I didn't realize this until Wednesday when I got a whole bunch of messages saying "Happy Birthday," wishing me <laughs> "Happy Birthday." Very nice, thank you, the Puminati. And I just copy and pasted a whole bunch of times. Thanks. My birthday is tomorrow, though. Ha ha. <laughs> 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 Fucking, it's such a Jeff Clark move. Yeah, you Jeffed yourself. <laughs> yeah, I did. I, my bad, my bad. All but uh, thanks for all the messages. I mean, what else can I say? Dumb, it's the I'm thought that ass. counts, and you, yeah. you're, it's your fault, even. Yeah, and some people, uh, 
were kind enough to wish me a b- happy birthday twice. My mom wished me a happy birthday on the Wednesday because she listened to it on the podcast. I thought that was weird. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. It's a joke. <laughs> that was a solid joke, though, Jeff. Yeah, it was Good kind job. of a dad joke. You sold Good it. Good job. You sold it. Yeah, thanks. Hopefully everyone laughed at home. I should have given it more breathing room. Uh, well, I've got a, another edition of the podium. Oh, real quick. I have a movie oh, review real oh, quick. Fuck. Yeah. All right. Real quick. It's not going to be long because it was God awful. No dicks. It's called, I'm thinking about ending things. Oh, I started that today. Cause I know it's a new Netflix movie and it's Charlie Kaufman, right? He wrote and directed yes. it. And it's who's he. He did adaptation. Yeah, he was like a hot screenwriter for a couple of years, right? In like the yeah. early two thousands. Yeah, I'm not a, a huge fan of his work. Um, he's a little yeah, he needs a wedgie. Yeah, he's he's pretty artsy, dry drama shit for the most part. Uh, I mean, he he did write being John Malkovich. I didn't like that. I don't. I don't like really. His shit. Honestly. Oh, I love yeah. being John Malkovich. But being John Malkovich is good. I've never uh, seen Schenectady, New York. Uh, what? How far have you gotten into it? Oh, I made That's it 10 hometown. minutes. I made it 10 minutes and I was like, I don't think I'm in the right mindset for this movie. I need to watch this on a different day. I was, I was born in Schenectady, New York. Seriously. That's, cool. That's, that's, I don't know. Whatever. Fuck. Whatever. That's all I have to add to the conversation. Whatever. I won't pay attention to your stupid Charlie Kaufman conversation. Whatever. I have sports to look at. It has Jesse Plemons in it. Good actor. Uh, I enjoy him. Tony Collette. I like her. It, I it see has her the girl from Chernobyl. Yeah, that, that little Irish lass. Is she Irish? Pretty sure. I think she's a, a singer too. Um, and it took two sittings to get through. How many times um, did you fall asleep? I didn't fall asleep any. Uh, the first sitting I was doing a fantasy football draft during. Um, but, Not ours. But at one point, uh, Sharon goes, I'm getting sleepy. How long's left in the movie? And it felt like we had been watching it for days. And we were at just about literally the halfway point of this two hour and 14 minute piece of pretentious bullshit. (laughs) I have never sat through such a fucking pretentious goddamn movie. Oh, I got 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 a good pair of eyes. No, I have not seen Inherent Vice, and what I didn't hear what you said, Kevin. Well, I was I was, was going to give you a pair up. Um, which did you hate more? Uh, uh, what was the the um, Jim Jarmusch zombie movie? Don't die when you're dead, or something like that. The dead don't die. The dead don't die. Yeah, I know that is one of your most hated movies of all time. Which did you hate more? The dead don't die. Okay, but because at least like. The dialogue was all so fucking pretentious. The the story was barely made any sense. Like it, there was a ballet number, uh, oh. like a long dance sequence thrown in there. <laughs> um, I don't care for that. What the fuck. Uh, and man, this movie's really broken your brain, huh, Shuddy? But it's like but you kind of like. There it. were parts that were that were cool to look at, like visually. Um, but a large chunk of the movie was Jesse Plemons and the the girl in a car driving during a snowstorm and just conversing or having thoughts in their head and 
reciting poetry and arguing about some movie and and this does sound terrible. Yeah. You're pissing and me off. And how the boy. actors portrayals of these characters made you just like there were points I was just like what the fuck are they what it just so much filler conversation that did not move the convoluted story uh along that are you stone shuddy i am very stone (laughs) um but yeah this was it was drivel drivel was pretentious artsy fuckery are you throwing out your first ever micro dick i mean the dead don't die and mean guns are below a micro dick so i guess yes this would be my first micro dick oh Take that, Charlie Kaufman. It was, yeah. I mean, <laughs> fuck, fuck you, Charlie Kaufman. I don't want to give you my interpretation of the movie. Uh, That's what we're here for. Because I don't want to spoil it if you plan on watching it, Kevin. But it's so convoluted that my take might not even be what the fucking point of the movie was. I don't know. Okay. All right. I mean, okay. Did you. You know, because I, you know, I can't keep track of everybody. Even I'm not that much of a film nerd, so I'm, I'm just going through his IMDb, and I did really like Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind, and I did really like being John Malkovich. Have you seen either of those, Shuddy? And what are your thoughts on them? I've seen Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind once. Didn't understand it. Have not seen it again. <laughs> All right. I enjoyed John Malkovich. I thought it was good. I All really right. enjoyed it. I like it. So, you know, ba- using those two movies as a comparison, he had a 50 50 chance of not bumming me out. The movie, Sharon picked it. The mo- She hated it so much that she has now sworn off picking anything we ever watch ever again. She. She, she banned her herself. Yeah, she. she, banned, she <laughs> yes. She, she bonked her. She bonked herself on the head with the ban hammer. She sure did. <laughs> All right. Progressive. Firm and fair. I appreciate it. Yeah, Sharon. it's a very progressive move to banhammer yourself. But Like she looked at me when it ended and said, I am so sorry that you had to sit through that. And Shuddy was like, you know what? You're sleeping on the couch tonight. Uh, but it's like, so throughout the movie, you get these snippets of this old man janitor in a high school. And Jesse's Plem- Jesse Plemons' character says something that's related to what to the scene with the old man, like. And then also, when scenes are happening, they glitch and things change, like the clothes they're wearing or the way his mom and dad look. Because the whole point of the movie is the girl who's just, um who's just cat credited as young girl is newly dating Jesse Plemons character and they're going to meet his parents. So while they're having the interaction with their parents, like the parents change, they go from looking relatively young to old and decrepit to like, it's just, Oh shit. Now they're Asian. Every no, it stays Tony Collette. And I, I know the British guy. I, I just he's a character actor. So Mr. Bean. Even, he's the guy from Sons name. of Anarchy, Charlie Hoonan. No. <laughs> um, Is it imagining poops? <laughs> so I then, wanted to use that earlier. She's so British. That glitches and things change. <laughs> so then you come to kind of realize that it's this old man's memory of things or his daydream of things. Uh, all on the way to him. It, this is what he's thinking about before he kills himself. Are we still reviewing a fucking movie? What's happening? Yeah, exactly. Jesus. Before he strips down naked and sits in his tr- pickup truck in a snowstorm. Uh, Do you get to see his dick? to death. Oh my God. No, Shut you-, you just went full spoiler? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. <laughs> You're going to get nice. Actually, no, I was nice. about to say you're about to get a whole bunch of pissed off people, but um, I don't think 
that movie seems like it's up the Puminati's alley. I don't that think you're really gonna piss anybody off. He just ran over that movie and then turned around and ran it over again. <laughs> so you see Jesse Plemons is dick and asshole, and then he dies. The end. It was very erotic. Five dicks. <laughs> uh, well, damn. Uh, I'm 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 glad you got to get your first micro dick out there, Shuddy boy. Thanks, Good stuff, Shuddy. Yeah. All right, back to the podium. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to derail well, us for so long. No, while you were spoiling uh, Charlie Kaufman's new movie, I was looking over the horoscopes, and they're they're not all that good. I think we can skip this week's. Well, come on. Give me the Virgo. All right. Uh, let me get my reading glasses on. Virgo is... <laughs> <laughs> if, <laughs> those are wonderful if someone offers you a gift take it you're not being noble by turning it down just take it you'll you need it podcast later podcast like that what with my nerf sunglasses on yeah it's kind of like a pft move but are those be nerf cool. knockarounds they are nerf knockarounds ooh let me see them put them back on and talk i don't like the blue lenses it's Nerf or nothing. Oh, they're blue. Um, <laughs> I very much. I have a pair of of knock around that I really Fort Knox that I really like so much so that I got a text alert from them on Friday about the Labor Day sale and I bought more knock arounds. They're a solid, inexpensive sunglass. Yeah, I like these. Who should sponsor us? They should. Uh, but I almost. I wanted. I. Ask the boys what their opinions on the Nerf ones were, and they looked at me and said no. So I didn't get those. No, the appropriate response is, I'm buying them, you're grounded. But I don't like those, I don't really like the mirrored lenses like that. All right, well, more Nerf sunglasses for me, Shuddy. But they're cool. I, I personally, I'm not Can't go back on it. fucking cool. Jesus. I just don't personally like mirrored sunglasses. And there's lots of color. Look at there. They're pink on the inside. And I think actually now that I say that, I'm going to realize that I probably ordered mirrored ones. Ah, uh-huh. we'll see. All right. I'll read you your horoscope, Jeff. Nice. Thank you. Uh, where, oh, uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, if someone offers you a gift, take it. You're not being noble by turning it down. Just take it. You'll need it later. That's why they're giving it to you to help. If anyone gives you something cool, I get to borrow it. Don't ask why. I just do. All right. Hey, I, I like your back to your uh, original theme of where all roads lead back to Kevin and him profiting off of everyone else's horoscope. I am incredibly selfish. Uh, I'll do yours too, Shuddy. Thanks. Depression. The number one thing making people sad. <laughs> if you're depressed, it may be because you're too inactive. Set some goals to accomplish over time and make sure you get them done. Clean your room or something. It's a mess. <laughs> That's it. That was the most horoscopy horoscope you've read so far. I feel like this this was so this what's the date on this? This is October of 99 so this is officially my senior year this was the first edition of the podium released of my senior year so i guess we didn't do a september one uh so yeah this is the first set of horoscopes i wrote for my senior year and maybe i was trying to take them kind of seriously like this must have been when you were making your awards run i was pandering <laughs> Leo says I don't even know what this one means that was so not funny I heard that and I'm a sheet of paper wait what are you doing I don't like that look in your eyes no don't crumble me up no Ah! oh yeah your horoscope you're doomed <laughs> wait is that what it's is that really how it reads yeah let me see if I can get this up there Oh man, I can't see. Uh, Don't take but you also have to off. talk. You uh, need those see. for credibility. Where is? Yeah, shut up, Leo. 
Oh, because I'm on speaker view? There, there's Leo. <laughs> <laughs> what a what a fucking dunce. I know. Should kick myself in the dick for that. You were writing it as that uh, was the newspaper speaking to them. It's original though, and it's creative. You you deserve points for that and recognition. And <laughs> apparently you got it. In oh, a here's a fucking bogus award. Here's more of me pandering for Taurus. Jumbo shrimp. True lies. Freezer burn. There are many things we encounter in life that don't make sense. So don't be discouraged by small things. You must prioritize. Fry the big fish first, then tackle the guppies. What? You fucking pompous dickhead. What's a guppy? <laughs> Come on, I'm not Jeff. Good with nature and ecology. You don't know what guppies are? No. Guppies are like tiny fish. Okay. I thought you just called them small fish. Whatever. Whatever. Fuck it. Our fucking pu- pussies use the word guppies. Around these I parts, we you... just call them small fish. I think you're a better podcaster with these Nerf sunglasses, and I think they should stay for at least a couple episodes. All right, I'm down. They fill me with confidence. <laughs> You should be confident. You should go out like that. I mean, I know you're not really socialized and no one is, but you look good. I got plans. You look rad. And it matches your Super Mario World uh, logo, sign, whatever, t-shirt. I am I, I am feeling quite rad today, Jeff. Yeah. You're right. <laughs> I don't think... Uh, okay, maybe this one, because there's some parts with caps in it. This is Aquarius. If you happen to come across Aquarius. a sp- If you happen to come across a small briefcase lying on the ground, don't open it. I think it's mine. Trust me, you do not want to look inside. Your stars are pointing to love. But I think it's referring to someone other than you. Don't be discouraged. I think you're special. That one was kind of scatterbrained. I don't know what the fuck I was thinking with that one. Yeah. It made even less sense than the one that was talking about crumbling paper and then you're doomed. I know. That's, uh, that's hard. I there, there was no good Campus Speaks Out in this one. I don't even think there was a Campus Speaks Out, which us, usually outshines my contributions. Yeah, my, they killed it on diversity in school shootings. So I had a band senior year called Jersey Devil. And we pretty what? much just covered songs. Yeah. We did. Oh, boy. This is embarrassing. What, what was your. What instrument did you play in the band? I was the lead singer. <laughs> Go on. Continue. What song? What song did you do? Or songs? Oh, man. We. So we covered for the talent show. Pretty sure this was our talent show song. Faith by Lisa. Ice, Ice Baby. Oh. No, it should have been the George Michael version he should have covered. <laughs> you don't cover the cover. Cover the original. We covered the cover. We did it as Limp Biscuit. We won the talent show. Uh, how and how then, pumped were you to yell Faith? Were you into it? Did you did you kill it on stage? I mean, you know, you you're, you look at your, your past through rose-colored glasses, and I walked away from that thinking I killed it. In all reality, I probably look like a giant fucking jerk-off. But, you know, we were just a couple of high school kids at Bing Bong School. So, all things considered, probably did okay. And then we did a concert, and I don't even remember all the songs we did, because I think we did... It was mostly new metal shit, because I was crazy into new metal when i was in high school so i think we covered fear Corn? fear factory limp biscuit uh oh coal chamber is is corn considered new metal yeah yes. i don't think we did any corn songs though you were a big fear factory fan still am but our, our drummer was really good he was a sick drummer but he was a weird guy and they interviewed him in the and he got profiled in this edition. 
You let your drummer do a profile? I didn't. It wasn't my decision. They just. Was it uh, for the band or no. was it just as a student? Okay. Just as a student. He didn't rep Jersey Devil, right? No, this was this was pre Jersey Devil, I think. Are, they, are you at all familiar with what the New Jersey Devils do? Could you even? Well, there's the New Jersey Devils, and then there's the urban legend of the Jersey Devil, which is what we were based on. I didn't know that the Jersey Devil was a thing. I never yes. heard of that. It's uh, like a Blair Witch. Yeah, it's Jersey's Blair Witch. In the uh, Pine Barrens. Okay. Anyways. So they asked so him a bunch of weird... You actually didn't know. You yeah, tried thought... to you tried to clown on Kevin, and ended up clowning on yourself. Yeah, I only knew the hockey team. <laughs> Whatever. All yeah, right, Jersey f- Devil, Blair Witch Project, Jersey. Go figure. Go of course, fuck, go of fuck course your own they have ass, their Jeff. own version of the Blair Witch Project. No, this was before the Blair. I I don't know the actual how the Blair Witch is not an actual legend, uh, but I was. It's that sort of thing. Gotcha. Okay. So he, he was a very strange guy, and they asked him a lot of strange questions to match. Mm-hmm. So he got asked, if you could be a superhero, what would your name and power be? And he said, I would be Jet Dry Man, and I would give Jet Dry out. For some reason, you know that dishwashing product, Jet Dry? Mm-hmm. He thought that was the funniest thing in the world. That was like if you called the cleaning product Poop Dick. Like <laughs> He just saw a Jet Dry commercial and lost his shit. And he would just run around campus getting in people's face and go, Jet Dry! So he would be Jet Dry Man and hand people samples of the dish detergent Jet Dry. That would be his superpower. Yes. And then they asked, what are your catchphrases? And he said, dishwasher, Taco Bell, microwavable shower, and Jet Dry. I mean, he could totally... Like just do that. What? He, just, he could say just, Taco Bell as a catchphrase. Well, no. I mean, he could have walked around with Jet Dry and just handed it out. He could. He chose not to. Yeah, it's called being a salesman. <laughs> yeah, it's like you could do that and have a superpower. They asked him if you could be a turkey or a cow, which one would you be and why? And his answer was no comment. He pled the fifth on turkey or cow. He doesn't want to spark controversy. I understand him. He is. Well, I guess he wasn't representing the Jersey Devil. I think I would take a cow. More people could live off of me. You just want to be eaten? I mean, isn't the destiny of those people to those people, those animals to be eaten? I mean, there are some cows that die of natural causes. You could be a dairy cow. Oh, yeah, suck my tits. Yeah, jerk me off. Yeah, okay, I guess I can do that. <laughs> <laughs> That's not where milk comes from, Jeff. <laughs> oh, man, I got nipples, Greg. Can you milk me? <laughs> <laughs> wow, I didn't realize he had been going to this school for six years. That checks out. Wow. That's it? All right. Uh, They asked him if you were stuck on Mars, what six things would you take from your house? And he said, my drums, all of my CDs, which I feel is is a cheating question. You should probably only be able to take one. Uh, My stereo, my four wheeler, my TV, and my Beavis and Butthead videos. I feel like he's got most of his priorities straight. I love the Beavis and Butthead. Did he say a VCR though? No. So he's going to have his Beavis and Butthead videos and no way to watch them. Maybe his TV at home is one of those ones that has a VCR uh, built into yep. it. Uh, how did you become fix, fixed on dishwashers and dishwasher products? One day during Follow band question. One day during band practice, I got really hyper and started saying weird stuff. So there's the origin of the jet dry weirdness. But yeah, this From the 6 year senior in the, in the fucking in the Bing Bong School graduate program. <laughs> so I I the movie reviews I reviewed Outside Providence, which I don't even remember seeing. Yeah, and I just I gave that, that three and a half dicks. It's it's a Fairly Brothers movie, evidently. 
Aren't all of them set in Rhode Island? Little Rhodey? Um, I don't know. Amy Smart I, is in it. I like her. She's hot. And then this other girl took a piece of my movie reviewing shtick and reviewed Blue Streak, the Martin Lawrence <laughs> Luke Wilson movie. <laughs> and this is like how you know it's a bing bong paper. She gave it two stars, and then underneath it, there's just one star. <laughs> <laughs> That's that's poor editing. Yeah. I reviewed that, the music hard. review. I reviewed Typo Negative's World Coming Down album and gave it five stars, of course. So I'm a t- Typo Negative dork. But yeah, that's about you it. Just, this is kind of a thing. You just episode. give out five stars every every single podium issue. I know. Yeah, I'm a I'm a bit of a review slut. <laughs> you are a five star slut. Jesus. <laughs> that's knobbing all those five dicks. Yeah, that's about it. I won't waste anybody's time with any more of that nonsense. I'll take a I'll take a look at the the next upcoming issues and see if they're even worth bringing to the table anymore. I say we keep it going. Uh, I'm always trying to hear my horoscopes from you. Twenty years ago. All right, I'll at least do that. <laughs> yeah, Bare just, minimum, just, we'll give Jeff his 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 horoscope for the week. Yeah, I need, Jeff. What, I need to know what my future is looking like or how to. Or if you're into Don't a shutty, myself. We'll, we'll hook you up, too. All right. Thank you. I, uh, I think that's it. You guys got anything else? No. Shutty, I'm impressed got... that we went this long. It was. I've been so fucking boring lately. I didn't have much to talk about, so I'm glad you guys brought so much to the table. Yeah, we're going to have to just have like a dude come over your house so you can blow him on camera and be interesting. <laughs> Yeah, everyone would love to hear the review on that. Oh, I give this dick two thumbs down. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Great. Shuddy, do you have any dates to promote at fucking Yuck Yucks or anything? Nope, I'm good. All right. Well, hey, friends. Uh, if you haven't already, you should subscribe to our YouTube channel. And you can see all of the shit that we are referencing. You can watch Shuddy Boy play playstation you can watch jeff tug on his tits hey real quick how's how's that rubik's cube coming jeff it's the thing i never even play with it it's it's too intimidating i'm never gonna finish it and i don't even want to make a stab at it because then it's like then i'm dumb (laughs) i smashed it with a hammer i'm pissed (laughs) yeah i'm gonna fucking kill it one night sort of guy (laughs) throw it out the window but yeah, check our YouTube channel and subscribe, youtube.com slash mad scientist party hour. S- pretty much the same URL for our Patreon if you want more shit, patreon.com slash mad scientist party hour. And if you want to be a part of voicemails, yay, call 201 472 0139 and leave a message after the beep. If you're a little too shy to talk on the phone and have your voice be heard, you can simply shoot an email to mad scientist. Party hour at gmail.com. I almost said the old one. <laughs> that said that was that was bizarre. <laughs> yep. Brain yep. fart. And my wait, and my birthday is this Wednesday, so everyone please wish me a happy birthday. Yeah. Send all of your dick pics to at Jeffro Records. Yeah, it's my birthday, September third this Wednesday, so holler at me. Uh what else? Uh, ooh, uh ooh. you can also follow us on Instagram. I'm at Kevin Craft. At Shuddy Boy. At Fade the Media. And at MSPH Podcast on both Twitter and Instagram. We we recorded the show a day late because Shuddy had some fatherly duties. Don't tell them that. I feel like I usually get the blame for it. I want to keep the tradition rolling. Well, well Jeff had to watch sports again. It's fucking dookie boy the cocksucker. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's why since it was Shuddy's fault, I put a video up on our Instagram of Shuddy Boy getting slapped, punched, and kicked in the nuts. So you almost get like your own little Schadenfreude Shuddy Boy voodoo doll for having to wait an extra day. Yeah, that was that was it looked voluntary, Shuddy. It was. You, that was my drunk party trick. Yeah, Shuddy oh, loved to get slapped, punched, and kicked in the nuts at parties. You could tell there was a certain look Shuddy Boy would have in his eyes, and you're like, oh yeah, he's primed for some slapping. Yeah, I would when I was completely fucking. I'm more embarrassed about the way I was wearing my hat and my goatee thing. 
than any of that. I don't know. I think he's still. You would cool. rather get kicked in the nuts than have that look again. Yep. I think you pulled it off, Shuddy. Thanks. I'm on your side. I think Kevin's being very nice to you, Shuddy. Because he's a friend, Jeff. I'm a. I'm just kidding. I'm a friend too. I'll sh- <laughs> I'll prove it. I'll prove it in the Patreon. Everyone, everyone, <laughs> tune in. <laughs> All right, friends, thank you for listening. But until next time, uh, something.